when we were doing some research, reading that about 750 products, maybe more, could be selling this chemical. And I'm assuming a lot of the uses are involved as an herbicide. Um, are you worried about just the one particular product or are you worried about all these other potential exposures of glyphosate? You know, as we've gone through this litigation, every time we think that there might be something there, we look and it's there in spades. And there's no question that as this litigation unfolds, as we work with experts, work with the EPA, work with the California OHIA, which just declared glyphosate a substance known to the state of California to be a carcinogen. As we work with these groups, I think the science is going to show that it might not just be limited to NHL, that there might be a, a relationship, for example, with GMOs and how the products themselves that are genetically manipulated and exposure to Roundup can actually have a combination effect. Now, as the litigation currently stands, we're focusing just on glyphosate and Roundup and NHL. But obviously, as we get more and more science, we're looking at seeing how it could affect potentially other types of cancers, or other types of immune diseases or diseases that we don't really understand where they're coming from suddenly all over the place. Well, I mean, that being said, can we bring in Dr. Toscano from UC Davis? I mean, that's one of the world's centers for agriculture study, and, and you yourself, Dr. Toscano, is an oncologist. Is the science there? What is your, what is your read on this? The data is conflicting. Mm -hmm. There's multiple good studies in several countries that show exposure can, can lead to an increased risk of cancers and different malignancies, particularly lymphoma. But the problem is, is that there are other studies that really don't show an association. But clearly, there is a signal there that needs to be investigated. There needs to be additional research. And who's going to fund it? Who's going to support right. this research? Obviously, the companies that are making these products are not going to. And is the government going to jump in? They want to help farmers. With the, they want to maximize production of, of crops. So, you know, I see a real problem here. Right. The, How the, can we move the, that the, science forward? The, 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 the science is not there, yet we need the science to definitively uh, make a call one way or the other. But the, the science well, is there. Well, that's just not true. I, I, Dr. Toscano, I appreciate your point, but that's just not true. These documents show pervasive scientific manipulation, ghostwriting. This is where an independent scientist published literature that was actually written by Monsanto, and they took their name off of it. They not only talk about ghostwriting in these documents, they brag about it. It's part of their performance reviews for coercing academics to publish junk science. In this email, Monsanto executive is trying to convince somebody to uh, not convince them that they shouldn't be on an article because they're worried about their association with Monsanto. And they tell them, it was decided by our management that we would not be able to use you as panelists slash authors because of your prior employment at Monsanto. These, these, these employees respond, we call that ghostwriting and it is unethical and follows up with, I can't be part of deceptive authorship on a presentation or publication. So these are people saying, listen, I'm not gonna be part of this ghostwriting. And thankfully, there's been some integrity with some of these scientists. There are dozens of epidemiological studies that show, without a question, that there is a risk.